Hey there, welcome to Bandit's Keep. I'm Daniel, and in this video we're going to talk a little bit about character building or character creation. Uh, not so much specifically the mechanics of it, there's plenty of videos out there about that, plus there's lots of different systems, right? But more about concept and kind of how we can bring characters to life. So, oh, uh, I've gone over 2,000 subscribers now. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing. Um, I told myself that when, if I went over 2,000 subscribers, I would be more serious. Maybe that's not the right way to say it about the channel. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you're watching this, please like and comment and do all those things. Also, uh, I found that um, if the videos are shared on different forums and stuff, they tend to do better. Every once in a while one's shared and I see it blow up. So uh, if you guys are watching this, you are part of any kind of a forum where you think that this could be relevant, please feel free to share it. I would appreciate that. So with that commercial being over, let's talk a second about making a character. So one thing that you want to consider when so now of course i'm going to take session zero out of the equation here because of course if you get together with a cool group of people and you all make the characters together if that's possible and you're going to take a session zero then a lot of the stuff will happen then but let's assume that you're playing maybe you're playing online which we do a lot or you're playing with the group that you played with before and you know the, the dm says okay i'm going to start a campaign in a couple of weeks uh, it's going to be you know, uh, this kind of campaign is going to be like uh, like John Carter or Mars, you know, and you all are kind of, uh, you, you end up on this strange planet and it's kind of a mix of tech and, and, uh, and swords, uh, swords and tech. Swords and planet, I think is what they call it. Um, you know, then you, you know, you have these kind of things. And now when you go to make your character, if you then make, uh, you know, and you're on this like, like uh, desert planet, you know, that is Mars, and then you make a character that, you know, lives underwater and all of their abilities have to do with being able to swim. Um, yeah, that's not really going to work, right? We want to build a character that has the right tone. I mean, that's a pretty extreme example, but it also comes down to, let's say that you, your, your, your game master says, hey, I want to run something kind of in the more of a sword and sorcery vibe, like Conan the Barbarian or this kind of thing. And then you go and make a character that's got one of those gigantic video game anime swords. And it's just this ridiculous spiked armor, like that just wouldn't fit that tone at all, right? They're going to stick out like a sore thumb. They're not going to work. So tone is really important and it doesn't take too much effort and it's it'll be worth your while when uh, a the tone of the game is described hopefully now by the way this is advice for both dms and players if you're a dm make sure you throw out the tone if you just say hey i'm starting a D, &D campaign make a character you can't expect the characters are going to make sense right you want to give a little bit of a pitch hey it's like this is the kind of thing we're going to be doing uh it's a low magic world it's a high magic world it's, it takes place in uh you know where everybody lives in the clouds on these floating islands it's in space you know it's underwater whatever it is right it could be anything um, you want to make sure that you let the players know so they can create something that has the proper tone. And then as a player, what you should do is go out there and do a little bit of research. You know, watch a few videos, some some movies or whatever, read some comic books or a novel that has that kind of feel to it. If somebody says, well, we're going to run this grim, dark fantasy, you know, go watch a, a, a grim, dark show or, or read a Wikipedia article about what, what grim, dark is. Maybe read a comic book or, you know, that kind of thing. So this way you have a general idea, right? You don't want to, uh, this can happen a lot too in games like where, let's say, Call of Cthulhu. Like it's, they're going to run in 1920s. You know, you don't need to know everything about the 1920s, but you should have some general ideas of what's around. So you know, you're not saying things like, oh, my character pulls out their iPhone. You know, well, I mean, the iPhone 1 might have existed in 19... Well, I don't know. Anyways, you know what I'm saying? Like you want, so the tone of your character is super important. But also, make sure it's something that you think is fun to play. Don't play a character type just because you think it's needed. That's one of the mistakes I see all the time. People talk about well-balanced parties and stuff like that. And, and I guess there's some, maybe that's another video. If you guys are interested, if you think that's actually a thing and you, you're worth discussing, let me know about that well-balanced parties. Do you think a well-balanced party is important? Do you think it's worth discussing? Um, but if you really want to play a magic user and there's already one in the party, don't play a fighter because oh, we already have a magic user. You know, play a magic user, play something you want to play. Uh, hopefully the Dungeon Master will present um, challenges that you will then be able to creatively overcome without having to have a fighter. I think any adventure that you need a certain class to overcome is not the best adventure, I'll say. I'm not going to say it, that's a bad thing. Sometimes the adventure might require a certain type of adventure because maybe that's who would go on it, right? Especially, obviously, if it's like a one-on-one -on -one or something small like that, but... 
you know, some of the old modules will say something like, you know, this would be best if you had a druid in the party. And that's usually because there's some kind of thing that the druid would benefit from. It doesn't mean you can't run it without a druid. So, yeah, you, you, I don't think almost no adventure can, that I can think of could you not do without a certain character type, at least ones that I've seen her run. It's certainly certain character types make them easier to do. And again, this comes down to the tone. If at the beginning the Dungeon Master says, hey, we're going to run a heist campaign. You know, it's going to be a mini campaign where we're going to, you know, do a lot of like breaking in, sneaking around and stuff. And then everybody plays, you know, fighters with heavy armor because they think that that's what would be fun to play. That's not what I mean. You've got to find a compromise, right? <laughs> Maybe you want to play a tough guy, but you want to play in this like thief world. So you do a light armored person that, that you know, uses the light weapons, right? But still maybe dual wields to be tougher or whatever, you know, however you want it. So it's definitely important to think about the tone, but also play a character that you want to play. The other mistake I think that I see people make a lot is they overbuild their characters at the beginning. And this is the, I know that this is a thing and people make fun of people for their backstories. Backstories are a good item. Let me know what you guys think about backstories. A lot of questions here. Because I had thought about doing a video about backstories and maybe I will if people are interested in that because I don't think they uh, are treated fairly from both sides. <laughs> I think the people that are advocates of them maybe go a little bit too far and those that aren't advocates of them also maybe go a little bit too far. I think somewhere in the middle is the right place. But I'll briefly say here that your backstory should give you enough information to kind of give you an idea of what the character would do. And then you can expand on it as you go. You want to give your character a place to grow. If you create this whole history where they, you know, are, have already done these things, right? Think about the hero's journey, right? You need to, to grow and change. If your character already has all of that in their backstory, then they're, and they are now a complete character, then that's not going to be fun to play for an entire campaign. That might be fun if you're playing a one or two shot and you want to have this in a special higher level. But if you're looking for a long-term character to play, give them room to grow. Give them some basic stuff. You know, okay, they've done this or they're interested in that. Things they, they, they want to achieve. You want to give them some goals, at least loosely. Not so hardcore, though, that they don't meet the tone of the game, right? Because if you give your character the goal to destroy this certain kind of creature and then the whole campaign is over here, you know, battling these other kind of creatures, or worse, <laughs> trying to ally with those kind of creatures, you may find your character is out of place, right? So again, fits with the tone, right? Don't create the character that wants to slay all lizard men when the campaign is about, you know, creating peace between the lizard men and the hobgoblins. Okay. Um, this is even more important when you are joining a group that already exists, or if you're a PC uh, dies and you want to bring in a new PC or you just switch PCs. Try to make a character that has a reason to be with the group. Because now you have inside information. You've been playing four, five, six sessions with the group. You've already learned a little bit of what the other player characters are, are like. Obviously, your character won't know this, but you as a player know, and you know that, okay, they are going to be doing this. They're trying, they're, they love treasure and they're trying to find this treasure and that's what they're after. So if you're creating a character that doesn't care about treasure, why are they joining the group? Or on the other hand, you know, let's say they're they're trying to free some people from whatever, and you create a character that doesn't care about that because they're a lone wolf and they don't care about people. Again, why why are they there? What what's the point of them being there? So make a character that fits. And when I say that, I don't mean fits as in the right class, like oh they already have a thief. I mean fits like they would join this group, right? Like why are they joining the group? They're not forced to. It's not like you're in you know, high school and they put you in a class together and you have to be there, right? I mean, adventuring parties choose to be together. So why are they joining together? And since you know, since you already know because the campaign's running, you already know what the goals of the party are, at least on some level, you can make a character that fits in at that moment. This is super important. That doesn't mean that you just make a character their exact goal is exactly what they want to do. You don't have to do that, but at least that it makes sense, right? Um <laughs> In my notes, I say tone again, because <laughs> I think tone is important. This is the most important thing. It's the thing I see people do all the time. You'll you'll have players come into your game, or you'll be a player in a game, and you'll make this character that's like a big, you know, joke, and it's got this funny voice, and, and then it's playing off some, you know, cartoon that you saw, and everybody else in the campaign is serious, or vice versa. It's funny and silly. And you're playing this really like, you're like, oh, 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 it doesn't work out. You know, make sure that you, you, your character fits the tone of the game. Um, I remember once we, um, 
and this is, you know, was communication. I'm not going to, I'm not faulting anybody here, but I was playing in a game. I joined a, a friend of mine, one of my regular players, Tony, you've probably seen him. Uh, we joined this game. It was a Western game together. We'd actually played with this GM before. Um, and two other players joined the Western game as well. But tone wasn't really discussed. We kind of had an idea. We had played before, so we didn't discuss it. And both myself and Tony made kind of what I would consider good guys. I mean, they were, you know, cowboys, so they, you know, whatever. They had six guns and they did whatever. But, you know, they weren't, you know, they generally had good hearts. And we found conflict because the both other players that we didn't know, they played kind of, you know, uh, good, the bad, and ugly characters and didn't really tell us that's what they were going to do. So it really created conflict in the group that it was actually not fun, to be honest with you. Conflict can be fun, but... Uh, playing with people for the first time and having your characters on completely opposed uh, fronts, unless you know that's going to be the game, can be really awkward and not fun. Uh, so, yeah, you know, find out what the tone is. If you're a player, if the DM doesn't tell you, ask. That's the mistake that I made. I didn't ask. I just assumed based on what we had played before, but ask what the tone is. Figure it out, right? And then if the tone is... You're kind of good-hearted cowboys. You're supposed to be helping people. And then another player comes in and they're playing a jerk. You can even meta it outside game and pause for a second and say, hey, I, you know, the tone of this game, we're supposed to be the heroes here. Like, can we get on board? It, it's not out of line to do that. You know, it's a game. You can talk. You don't have to stay in character all the time and fight. You can actually literally have a conversation with people. I know it's weird. Um, but the one thing I will say is that when you're building your character, don't build somebody just on a very simple gimmick. Don't be like, okay, my character always walks on one foot and skips up and down, or whatever the gimmick might be, or they always scream this battle cry when they run in. You know, make a character that's a little more dimension than that. You don't have to fully flesh out their whole backstory for a long thing, as I said, but don't make them a, a walking gimmick, you know, a one-hit wonder, or whatever you want to call it. Like, I think you flesh them up more than that. Why are they that? What, is there a reason why they're kind of using this gimmick? And I will point out something that I think is kind of... I don't want to say it's a gimmick, but it's something that uh, I think is really interesting. And if you've ever read any of the uh, Brits, uh, Lieber, or maybe it's Lieber, uh, stories of Farford and the Grey Mouser, they each have a sword and uh, basically a dagger, uh, and they are named, right? They're named weapons. But, I don't know, somewhere in the middle of the, story, the, the, the series, because it's a whole bunch of stories, uh, this is not a spoiler, don't worry about it, um, they talk about how, the author talks about how, yeah, this is not the same sword, like, Grey Wand, which is Farford's uh, big two-handed sword or sword, you know, that, that he fights with, is not the same sword. Like, he's lost that sword many times over, but every time he gets a new sword, he names it Grey Wand because his sword is Grey Wand. And then, and there's like, you know, of course, when people hear about Farford, they hear about his legendary sword, but it's not always the same sword, right? That's just what he names his sword. And what I mean by that is, like, if you literally had a sword and you started the game, and this sword is Grey Wand, and then it gets lost, and if that was your only gimmick, you kind of screwed yourself. But if you're Farford, and really, the the thing is, you are a mighty swordsman, and the sword you fight with is Grey Wand. That's much different, and it's just a different way to look at it. So, um, you know, your character is the important part, not the sword. So... Your character is the important part, not the gimmick that you're doing this or that they have this item or they're on that quest or they had this background. The overall character is what's important here. So you notice I didn't talk about mechanics at all. I don't feel that that is super important. And again, games can stretch. You can play the most basic game like Hateful Place. So you can make a character in five minutes all the way up to more complex games like, uh, you know, complex meaning there's lots of things going on like, like some of the later D&D &D games, like 3.5 or whatever, that I have not played, so I can't speak on, but I've heard that it takes longer time to make characters because you're picking lots of abilities and stuff. Um, and no matter what the game is, you you know, whatever the mechanics of the game are, you still want to create a character that's interesting, right? If, if they're only interesting mechanically, then that's not interesting for the long run, I believe. I think you won't have as much fun with it as you will with a character that's, that interests you as a character, Right? A compelling character, not just a straight up trope, not a gimmick, not a not a one one note thing, a character that is well rounded that we learn about. If you think about like a TV series, I can guarantee you in many cases with these TV, TV series, they don't write all these details about the characters in the beginning. You know, they have their basic idea. And as the seasons progress, they add a little bit here, they add a little bit there and they grow. And that's how your character can be. And usually you know, it's not that big of a deal. If you said, oh, my character was a blacksmith, you don't have to get into any more detail than that. 
later in the game, if it becomes relevant, then you can say something like, oh yeah, you know, the, the, the shop they work for was, uh, you know, specialized in making horseshoes, you know, whatever it might be, right? And if that becomes relevant and is interesting, it's part of a story, right? Because maybe you see somebody making horseshoes and you want to make the, a conversation with them. You can just go up there and say, hey, you know, my character knows this, um, and then have this conversation. And this then allows your character to grow without having nailed down at the beginning, oh, they make horseshoes, if that makes sense. So let me know what you guys think. Um, what do you think is the most important thing when you're making a character? Their name? <laughs> no. Uh, you know, what is it? Do you think class first? Do you think idea first? Do you think concept? Do you use gimmicks to kind of get your going? Uh, what is it about creating a character that's interesting to you? What do you think, if you guys run games, uh, are some of your favorite characters? Do you have favorite characters that you've, that you've had in your campaigns as DMs? Do you have favorite characters as players? Uh, I'd be curious. And to and what made them your favorite character? Was it a stat or was it something else about them? It could be either one. I'm curious to know. In any case, thanks again for watching, guys. Uh, again, like I said, if you haven't liked the video and subscribed and ring the bell, all the good stuff, go ahead and do that. Please share this around. We're trying to... Now and now I have to get 3,000, right? I mean, we're going to have to keep going. This is how YouTube works. Once you start rolling, you're rolling, right? So we're moving forward. Um, if you don't subscribe to my, or if you do subscribe to my actual play channel, you might see we're playing less games right now. It's the summer. That's why. Um, but I am, and I'll keep you, I'll keep you informed here. Um, I am uh, working on that 5e adventure, adventure because I'm taking the storytelling course. So uh, we'll be doing a, 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 what do you call it? A play test of that. So you'll see, you'll see that soon. So if you're interested in the position, you can see that as well. In any case, I will uh, talk to you next week.